Hey everyone, so here's a video that I promised you for anyone who's interested in putting one of these together on how to actually assemble this thing starting uh, at the very start. So uh, again, the way that the that this kit or the uh, the plastic pieces, at least from Shapeways, are going to come or they're going to be attached to a tree like this. Uh, the point of this really is just to save money. Um, this thing would have been literally several times more expensive had I done these pieces individually uh, with Shapeways their formula considers the the size of the part and and so on and so forth they've got some formula and um, you know just these two shock towers alone would have cost almost as much as this whole thing which which is kind of ridiculous but that's just the way their pricing model works out so I went ahead and stuck everything on a tree so it comes like this that creates a little bit more work for you but saves you a ton of money if you're interested in putting one of these things together so I'm just going to start walking through the process of how you basically take this thing along with some hardware and so on and turn it into a proper front suspension for your 128th scale associated car. So first thing is first is removing the parts from the parts tree. Uh, you know, there's no particular order that you have to do this. Take an X-Acto knife. If you're a kid, ask your parent or whatever. I'm not going to be responsible if anyone chops their finger off. But basically, it's just pretty self-explanatory, is you just take the X-Acto knife and you put it right up to the edge of the part. Maybe carefully put a finger on the part, not in the way of the blade, and then cut it so that the part doesn't, doesn't fly off somewhere when you cut it because these parts are, are quite small. They'd be easy to lose. So let me go ahead and hack these off real quick. And then uh, let's see, we'll do this one here next. We can come back and kind of clean up. Oops, so like that. Okay, so that's exactly what I was talking about. That's what they do. They shoot across the room and some of these smaller parts would be really hard to find. So again, I will try and even take my own advice here and make sure that I'm holding these when I cut them. For the shock tower, you want to try and cut, if I can focus here, you want to try and cut right along this, this straight edge right here without actually cutting into it any. So just take your time, try and be accurate with where you put the blade, and then just press down. And again, it's better to cut a little bit too much if you need to, and then you can kind of come back and file those later if needed. So just go ahead and Cut them all off and again, hold on to them. These things you can discard. Hold on to them so they don't fly across the room like mine did. Um, so that brings us to this piece here. Go ahead and hack that off. And then the A-arms, we'll cut those off. And again, just try and cut flush if you can, but if you can't, you know, you can go ahead and, and trim them up a little bit later if, if you want it to look really nice. So here's the part where I point out how Shapeways um, colors their parts. So basically what Shapeways does is with this nylon material, and I see that I'm missing one of these, so I shot it across the room somewhere. Again, not listening to my own advice, so I'll, I'll find it in a bit. Um, basically the way Shapeways does this with these nylon materials is they print everything in white and then at some point in printing, I don't know if it's the last step or if it's even after printing, they're basically dyeing these parts. And so what you see here is where you cut the parts off the tree, you're left with an exposed white area that you see here. Um, and this is true on all the parts because they were all attached to the tree. So you can see on the, on the shock towers here even on these little collars, there's a little white bit right there. So the easiest way to fix that is, is again, you know, you want to try and trim these as flush as you can. Again, uh, you know, nobody cuts yourself or anything, but just carefully take an X-Acto knife, make sure you're not cutting toward your fingers or anything, and just kind of shave these, these little bits where the tree was attached as flush as you can. You can always hit it with a file if, if you're not able to cut it real flush. So do that with all the parts until you're happy with, with how, that, how that is. And then just take a good plain old Sharpie here. Now watch the magic. And you Sharpie over that like that. 
and like that. And now it's gone. Now you've got a completely black part with uh, any of those little any of those little markings gone. So you're gonna go ahead and just do that on all, all the pieces you can see on the A arms here. You got a couple little circles where it was attached to the tree. So again, I'll make those vanish like that, like that. If you're really lazy or really in a hurry, you don't have to bother. Nobody's probably gonna notice these little random white circles on anything, but you know, it only takes a few minutes and who doesn't have Sharpies laying all around. So that's basically the first step. I won't, I won't uh, trouble you with watching me paint all those things. So the next step is what you got to do is the holes from the 3D printed parts are often not super round and a lot of times they're, they tend to be kind of undersized. So this is where you're going to use some drills here. I'll list the size of these drills in the, uh, in the description. But basically there's um, a 46 thou, that's the one that's going to be um, uh, received the threads of the screws. There's a 59 thou, which is the clearance for those screws. And then there's a 78 thou, which is the bottom press fit for the, the king pins that the, uh, the steering knuckles rotate on. So that's basically um, down here. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to start off with the smallest drill. I'll start off with the um, with the smallest one, which was what I say, uh, 46 thou. Uh, it's really handy to have a pin vise to put a small drill like this in. You can do it without it. You can hold it by hands, but it's really easiest to have a pin vise just to do this. So the shock towers don't need any any 46 thou holes. The um, the A arms need one 46 thou hole. The other hole is a clearance. So if you look at the arm like this, you should be able to tell which is the front of the arm. The front of the arm is the the side that's tapered like this. So the hole on that side is actually the one that's going to get threaded when you put this thing together finally. So just try and get the drill lined up real straight and just gently ream this through. It may not really even take any, any force. These holes, at least in this batch, actually came out pretty nice. So don't make the hole oversized because the threads won't hold good, but just kind of go in and gently ream that out. Because the back hole here is actually a clearance for the same screw, you can go, th go ahead and go through all the way if you want. So again, on these two arms, you're gonna do that. And likewise, again, from from the front of the arm, which is the angled side, you're gonna just gently go through this. You can go ahead and go through the back side if you want. Okay, so that takes care of, um, of those holes for the arms. Now, also in the arms, there's holes where the, the shocks are gonna mount. And so again, starting from the front, you can work your way back. The back part here is the part that's actually threaded. The front part here where I stuck the drill through initially, if you notice, is just a clearance. It's, a, it's supposed to be a clearance. So you can just go ahead and stick it through there so it's lined up. And then you can go, you can go all the way through. It should come out on the back of the arm. You see like that. So again, just roll gently. And then likewise, same thing on the other arm, starting from the front of the arm. It's a clearance hole. And then you're going to just gently find the hole it's in the, the back half of the arm. And again, just sort of gently drill that out. There we go, okay. So that takes care of the arms for, for this particular drill. We'll come back to them later. On the, the bulkhead itself, you've got a few sets of holes here. So these holes here that you see, if you can see this, you see a hole here and one here. These are actually gonna be threaded. So you're gonna take these holes here and the ones on the opposite side, these top two, and go through with this 46 thou. So let me do that real quick. Again, it doesn't really take too much effort. You're just kind of cleaning those up. Like that and that. And then likewise on the other side. Again, just those top two holes, those are what the shock tower ends up screwing onto. Like that. Okay. There we go. And then I believe that is it for the bulkhead for this particular, uh, for this particular uh, drill. The other thing is, and again, I shot one of the shock, collar, shock collars across the room. 
doing exactly what I told you not to. So these shock collars have one hole that's clearance and you can see how the drill goes in this side real easy. And then the other side is actually uh, a threaded one. So you wanna, get, again, just real gently uh, clear out the one that's um, that's gonna be threaded with the 46 thou uh, screw. So I think that's it for this particular drill. Now you can take this out of your pin vise or whatever you're using and you're gonna take the 59 thou drill here and put it in the pin vise, tighten it up. And so again, we'll start with the, we'll go ahead and start with the arms. So again, on the arms, I mentioned that the front hole here is the one that's actually, actually threaded. The back hole is a clearance. So on this one, you don't wanna go through this way because if you do with this larger drill, you're gonna drill it so that you won't be able to form any threads on this side. So for th these particular holes, you actually wanna go from the back side of the arm, that's the flat side here, and go ahead and carefully run in this, um, this particular drill here. And whatever you do, don't go through the front side, because again, this is the side that's gonna be threaded. The back side is clearance, so that's why we're using this bigger drill. So go ahead and just clean out that back area there. Okay. And then at the same time, you can do the front hole for the shock if it needs it, because again, this part of the shock hole here is a clearance hole. This one didn't really need it, but again, don't go all the way through because the back part here for the shock hole is what needs to be threaded. And then likewise on the other arm, again, you're gonna go through uh, the front of the shock hole if needed, and then stop there. And then likewise for the hinge pin right here, you're gonna go through the back and then stop there. So if I can get this lined up and give it a little twist again, and don't let the drill pull itself all the way into and drill into this side here, it, it may want to do that. So just make sure that you stop uh, and you only drill the back hole in this step. So there we go. So that takes care of the arms with these drills. Now these ones, next ones I'm going to show you are, are kind of critical. These are where the, the hinge pins are going to rotate in the bulkhead. So these are these lower ones here. And, and over here on the other side. So these ones, again, you wanna just carefully ream here, try and make sure that you're lined up straight with the part, that you're not going at any funny angle or anything. Take your time and just ream that out real carefully. Like that, don't overdo it. it only has to be able to go through. You don't wanna enlarge it any because that'll make the arm sloppy where it's mounted on there. And then likewise, you're gonna do the same thing on that lower one on the other side. Again, make sure you're lined up in all directions. And there you go. You just wanna get it through. You don't need to, to really hog it out. Just go through until you can get the drill all the way through and then and then stop and, and uh, twist it and pull it back. Um, the other holes on the bulkhead then are for, um, for mounting it to the chassis. And those actually also get um, get this size screw or this size. Uh, these are actually going to get the the black screws that come on these cars, like you see, uh, like you see here. These are self-tapping screws. They're actually going to get uh, threaded in. There's a couple up here on the top too. Um, I believe these top ones are actually the ones that thread in into the bulkhead. Now that I think about it, so basically these self-threading screws that come with the car that you reuse to mount all this. Uh, get this same drill size. Again, this is the um, the 59 thou. So just try and go real straight through here. You'll notice that the uh, the top of this thing is at an angle. The top of the of the bulkhead does have a little angle on it, but this the 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 drill is actually going through perpendicular to the bottom of this thing. So don't try and come in at an angle that's perpendicular to this top surface. Just go ahead and go go straight down with it. It should follow the hole that's there from uh, from printing this at Shapeways. So you wanna go ahead and do those. Again, don't go, go, don't go too crazy on them. You're just trying to, trying to ream them out. Okay, and you see you're removing a little bit of material here, but not too much. Okay, so that takes care of those. Now on the shock towers, all three holes are gonna be this same uh, 59 thou. So you can just go ahead and do those real quick. 
there's the top one which this one didn't really need anything and the bottom two which again printed pretty well and, and didn't really need anything you can do that on both on both shock towers again all three holes like that okay so now the shock towers are done the shock collars that are going to go on the shocks again one side of the hole is clearance and the other side is is for tapping it um, if you look real closely if you have better eyes than me you can probably see when you have the parts in your hand that one hole is smaller than the other so again basically what you want to do here is you just want to make sure that the bigger of those two holes that this uh, 59 thou drill will go through it but what you don't want to do is you don't want to drill into the smaller hole side because again that's where you're going to form threads so basically that's all the prep work that you need to do on these on these plastic parts um, actually I take that back there's one exception is at the very end of the assembly process you're going to push the the kingpin so I'm calling these things here that go through and hold the hold the the steering knuckles on here are kingpins and they're basically a, they're a slip fit on top and then on the bottom they're a press fit and so what you want to do is you want to take your arms this is the last drill this is the uh, 78 thou drill you can go through the top because the top is slip fit and then on the bottom just very carefully again ream that out and it's going to be a press fit for that kingpin so don't overdo it because you want it to be a press fit so do that on both arms Again, you can do this by hand, or I could have stuck it in the pin vise, but it's fairly easy just to do it by hand as well. So there we go. So that's sort of the, I guess what I would call the first step in putting this kit together is separating all the parts from the parts tree. Hopefully you don't lose any. I'll, I'll see if I can round this other one up. And then if you want, you can go and you can try and make the edges uh, really nice and clean where you cut them and take a sharpie and sharpie up these these little exposed black areas that all the pieces are going to have from where they were attached to the tree and then you can go ahead and use the 46 thou 59 thou and 78 thou drills to go and and just ream out all those holes so we'll call we'll, we'll just call this part one now part two what we'll do i'll make it another video we'll come back and we'll start actually assembling these parts into uh into the front suspension uh, like you see here, and then I'll probably go ahead and make a third video where I show you actually putting it um, putting it on the car. So that's it for now. Stay tuned.